I have Mark Fisher with me. He's the Chief Development Officer at Merlin Entertainments, who is, of course, opening uh, this fantastic museum. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Job, very well, job well done. I hope so. At a fairly significant cost. I mean, each one of these individual figures, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, cost around about £150,000. That's over 300000 Singapore dollars. They do, and they can take up to three months to make. Uh, and I've got 25, 30 people involved in each one. Uh, it's a real kind of uh, a fantastically uh, interesting process when you see them being made. And as you were telling me earlier, each individual hair is put in place. I'm surprised it doesn't take longer than three months, to be honest. You have to have very, very good patience when you're putting in every single hair on uh, somebody like Brad Pitt in, uh, in uh, uh, the beard and the hair and everything else. Really, really good. So how long does it take for you to recoup those costs? We look at probably recouping everything back in about a five-year period. Um, so Madame Tussauds is extremely successful around the world. We have 18 of them now. Uh, and uh, they continue to go from strength to strength, so they continue to give us the investment. Mm. And you're continually adding figures? All the time. So every single one will have new figures and new exhibitions that they bring in, um, probably up to four or five different figures every year. We have some mobile exhibitions. We have some black boxes where we will literally have a black box in the business and bring in maybe a Bollywood set so that people can have a look at that kind of stuff. So lots mm. of new innovative stuff going on. You know, I'm interested in the financials here because uh, Merlin Entertainment is listed in London. Yes. Um, average figures around about a third owned by private equity. Yep. Around about 25 or so percent owned by a Danish family yep. who owns Legoland because, of course, Merlin also owns yep. the, the Legoland uh, developments. Uh, what sort of pressure do you get from your from the shareholders that aren't necessarily coming through listed on, on the LSE to uh, perform in a certain way or to, to go to a certain geographic area? I don't think we do. We, we've got a very good long-term strategy plan. And uh, those um, uh, investors have been with us a long time, so we've got a really, really good relationship. They trust us, we trust them. Uh, so clearly we talk to them and they tell them what we want to do. Uh, but they're really, really happy the way things have gone. You said we did the listing last year in London. Uh, so we're in our first year of being a, a, a sort of public listed company, which has been interesting. It's a new thing for us to do. We're more in the public eye, perhaps, than we were beforehand. But, I mean, so far, so good. Martin, join us here. Yeah, hi, good morning, uh, Mark. This is Martin back at the SGX. I've got a really uh, simple and maybe even a silly question for you, and that is, look, I'm trying to figure this out. What is the business model for a, a wax museum? Is it as simple as, okay, listen, we charge admission, a lot of people come, we make money, and that's it, or is there more? I, uh I like to think there's more because I think there's a whole entertainment piece that goes with that. So you, you don't just come and look at figures. If you, if you came in here today in uh, Singapore, you see lots of interaction with uh, you can you can play golf with Tiger Woods. Uh, you can shoot hoops with some of the basketball stars that we've got. So it's a really kind of interactive entertainment experience to, to take part in. The people are going out. And we have some of the highest uh, customer satisfaction scores in the whole group in Madame Tussauds because people like it so much. And, uh, and ultimately, the main thing is you can come and you can hold hands with Brad Pitt or Angelina Jolie, depending ah. who you want to, uh, to <laughs> okay. hold hands with. Okay, so that which which nicely leads to my next question. These things are not cheap. 150,000 pounds take a long time to make. Three months, if not longer, each hair individually is planted in in their scalps. But you know these things are not in glass cases. There are no you know velvet ropes cordoning off these uh, things. And I'm sure people like to to touch and pinch and pull at these things every every day. So my question is, how durable are they? And, and two, do you have backups, and how many? I, I, I think the, uh, the, the, the several answers to that is that they're very, very durable, um, the way that we, uh, we make the figures. But also we have a, we have a fantastic in-house team uh, here in uh, Madhati Sul, Singapore. And every single day, as soon as the doors close for the evening, uh, those, those uh, uh, people will come out and they'll just make sure that everything is in place. They'll redo the hair, they'll redo the makeup for the figures. Um, and, and we do have one or two backups in place. If things happen and, and back in London we have a, a big studio um, with a whole host of really skilled technical people um, and very quickly if we need to do something and replace something we can do that the, the quality of the figures is absolutely the thing that makes Madame Tussauds stand out against the wax museums across the world so it's, it's one of our number one priorities really uh, Mark look let me ask you before you go we've seen a, a, a quite a substantial slowdown coming through in Europe and there is a fear that we're going to get another recession there we are seeing improving growth in the US but it's a very slow picture mm -hmm. how is the economics of what we're seeing on the global front today impacting your business 
I, th I think one of the nice things about Merlin is we're, we're a global business. So whereas you find certain areas of the world perhaps that slow down a little bit, uh, we've got other areas that are uh, uh, expanding at a, at, a, at a great rate. So as a business, we stay very, very stable. And I think some of these things are cyclical. Um, you know, some of those markets will come back. We're pretty happy because we've got very strong brands, and those strong brands tend to be more robust probably than some other businesses. Okay. Mike, it's a pleasure to have you here today. Congratulations Thank again on much. this fantastic space. Good Great. to have you with us.